So the first thing that I heard the Lord say was, I, I heard the Lord say that this region is the neck of the nation. Now, my father-in-law, jokingly, he always makes this, this marriage joke whenever he, he marries people together. And he always says, listen, in my head, in my, in my marriage, I am the head of my home. But my wife is the neck that turns the head. <laughs> Understand that this region is the neck that turns the head. And, of course, if you'll see on the map, I, I have to confess to you that um, my geography is not my best thing. For example, my daughter lives in Brooklyn. And I invited her to come be with me in D.C. because I thought, oh, that's up in the Northeast. I live in the South, okay? <laughs> and then last night she called me about 10 minutes after 10 and said, hey, Mom, you sound like you're in bed. I said, yeah, I got an early morning flight. Where are you going? Uh, Newark? Mom. That's right around the corner from me. <laughs> so I'm a good prophet, okay? <laughs> I'm maybe not good at geography, okay? But if you'll look at this, you actually see that it's a neck. It's the neck to the New England, New England states. When you actually study what is the spiritual understanding of what's happening in the states below that, you understand that there's a lot greater spiritual Christian engagement. And then it comes up through Pennsylvania and New Jersey, and it starts to wane, and then it hits New York, and something disastrous happens. And then New England has no has no revival at all. I'm not saying at all. There's pockets of revival up there. But I felt like the Lord said, this is the neck of the nation. And so, of course, I didn't say it was the pain in the neck of the nation, okay? I said it was the neck of the nation, all right? So I, I went to the Word, and let me just share with you several things about the significance about this area being the neck. Good things first, okay? Remember, this is what God is decreeing, okay? So in the Bible, the neck is the place of spiritual strength, they say, bind kindness upon your neck. Bind truth upon your neck. Bind the law of God upon your neck. It's a, it's a, a place of spiritual foundations, and it's a, a place of spiritual truth that gives you strength. Now, as it's already been alluded to, this area is literally the foundation point of spiritual awakening for this nation. Okay? And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But I believe that God is revisiting the foundational places in this day. Okay? So, just keep that in mind. It's a place of spiritual strength. Number two, it's a place of being adorned with favor. In the days of Joseph, when Joseph found favor with Pharaoh, Pharaoh gave him a robe, gave him a ring, but then it also says he put a gold chain around his neck. When Daniel was exalted with favor... Daniel was also given uh, garments of royalty, but then it also says that he was adorned with a chain that indicated the favor of the king. And I want you to understand that around the neck of this nation and in this region, God is declaring that I want to release my divine favor, just like the king stretched out his scepter of favor to, to es Esther and said, what do you want? Make a decree, write a new decree, write it in the king's name, seal it with the king's signet ring, because whatever's written in the king's signet ring cannot be reversed. We need to understand that there is an importance on the church in this region to begin to release the voice of God, the decrees of the spirit, and to begin to declare God's favor. You see it all over this area economically, but we want to see the favor of the Lord come down spiritually and begin to pop open the bottleneck of revival that this area has been strangulated by. Come on, how, how do you strangle? So you cut off the neck. You cut off the, the breath at the neck. And we're going to talk about breath in just a minute. But I, I believe that God is saying that he is coming in and he wants to begin to breathe life. And he wants to break open this bottleneck area in the nation so that the New England states and the rest of the states can actually come in and experience a full, a full flood of revival. Amen? Now, look at some of the negative connotations of the neck. The neck is the place where a yoke is worn. A yoke of bondage. A yoke of slavery. And I believe that the enemy has tried to yoke the neck of this nation through this region. <laughs> the place of great awakening that became a place of 
promotion of humanism, of godlessness, of spiritual blindness, of deception, of having a form but no power. Most of the universities in this area came out of awakenings. They came out of spiritual movements, spiritual revivals, and then they became some of the, the, the forefront places. There's an ethics professor, and I won't, I won't call his name, but there's an ethics professor at one of the, the main universities in this area that agrees that life begins, human life begins at conception. Personhood, however, probably doesn't happen until about three years old. Therefore, the issue really isn't about life. It's about personhood. And he presents to his class, it's an ethics professor, hello, that there should be an option until the child is a person. How did that happen? Because God first decreed that this would be a land of awakening and revival. But the enemies come in and he's tried to take over this area, all right? It's a place where a yoke is worn. Number four, <laughs> It's a place, the neck is a place that represents rebellion and hard-heartedness. The Bible calls it being stiff-necked. Okay? When you deliver a message like this, you hope that you didn't wake up wrong in the morning so that you're going, okay. <laughs> okay. Being stiff-necked. Listen to this. Acts chapter 7 verse 51. You men who are stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart... And ears always resisting the Holy Spirit. You are doing just as your fathers did. The neck of the nation. Come on, how many understand God wants the neck of the nation to be adorned with favor, to be a place of spiritual strength, and yet can we admit that it's become a place of being stiff-necked and hard-hearted. Actually, Scripture actually talks about Having hardened necks. Okay, hardened necks. But see, the neck also has a very interesting symbolism in the scripture. And the neck also represents a place of incredible dominion. In the book of Joshua, when, the Josh, when, when Joshua and the children of Israel overthrew their enemies, Joshua took the five kings that were gathered together at a place called Makeda. He brought those five kings, he laid them down, and he had every single soldier in the army come and put their foot on the neck of the enemy. You know why? Because the neck is a symbol of dominion. Come on, and God wants to take us out of a place where this region has been known for its spiritual stiff neck. And begin to cause this to be a place of great authority and great dominion where we can put our foot on the neck of the enemy. Amen? How many believe that God wants to move in this region? How many believe that God wants to blow by his wind, by the breath of his spirit? Come on. And, and, and if you feel like, you, I feel like there's even generational stiff neck up in this area. I feel like that there's been like generation to generation, those that just resist God and are hardened to God, people that have been bitter and they pass their bitterness down generation to generation. And what we're seeing in recent years, in the last 20 years, is rather than continuing to identify with the, with the religion of your birth, be it Catholic or Protestant or whatever, because if you would have taken polls 20, 30, 40 years ago, uh, 75 to 80% of this region reported a religious affiliation. But do you realize that there's places right here in this region that up to 40% of the people in that region claim no religious affiliation at all? It's the highest level that we've ever seen in our nation. I believe we need an awakening. Amen? I believe that why God talks about this is because he wants to bring an awakening to this region. Amen? And, and I, I, I want uh, Pastor Peter and, and, and Pastor Tricia just to stand up again. And the Lord says, son and daughter, I want you to know that I'm extending a scepter of favor over you. And just like I put um, an anointing upon Daniel and an anointing upon Joseph and an anointing upon Deborah and an anointing upon Esther, the Lord says, so I am putting my hand of favor upon you. 
And the Lord says that you're going to walk seamlessly between the marketplace and, uh, anointing and, your, and, and the ministry anointing, the apostolic prophetic uh, establishment anointing that I've called you to walk in, says the Lord. And, and the Lord says that, uh, son, I want you to know that there's days that you've cried to get out of the marketplace. But I want you to also know, son, those are the same days that I've been crying to get into the marketplace. And the Lord says, son, I want you to, to be at peace with the fact that I'll have one, you'll always have one foot in the marketplace to a different dimension and to different, uh, d- different uh, time div- divisions. But the Lord says that I've called you to do and to be both because it was out of this region that I birthed a prayer revival that, through Jeremiah Lamphere, who was a businessman who caused one of the greatest revivals that the world has ever seen. Over two million converts coming into the kingdom because this man took his place in the marketplace and released the voice. And the Lord says, son, I, I've anointed you as an apostle. And just like Paul had a tent making business, so the Lord says, I've given you a tent making business and I'm longing to use that as a platform to begin to, to infiltrate this state and the state of New York. The Lord says, son, I want you to know, son, that I'm releasing a new platform for your voice in this next season of time that is going to begin to gather the marketplace leaders, is going to gather the seven mountain leaders. And the Lord says, you're going to, you're going to release to them strategies and wisdom and insight and prophetic direction for the days that are ahead. And the Lord says, daughter, I want you to know that I put that Deborah anointing, that general anointing upon you, says God. And the Lord says, daughter, you're going to have the battle strategies that are going to break the troops free. And I knew what I was doing when I married an apostle to a prophet, even though neither one of you knew what you were at the time. The Lord says, I put upon you the double portion anointing of apostle and prophet, of wisdom and revelation, but also of marketplace and of ministry. And the Lord says, son and daughter, that as you've joined your heart to my heart, the Lord says, I want you to know that I have been faithful every step of the way to break you open and to break you in. And you're getting ready to come into a whole new time of establishment for the church and the ministry for my scepter of favors extended to you. And I'm saying to you what I said to Esther, ask me what you want. Don't ask me what you think you can afford Don't ask me what you think you need. The Lord says, I've already put it in your heart what to want. And the Lord says, clear your head of the limitations in this season. Clear your head and dream big, says the Lord. I'm giving you permission to two people that already know how to dream big. I'm giving you an even greater permission to dream even bigger, says the Lord. For the next three years, you're going to begin to see some things unfold in this region, says God, that are going to catapult you to a whole new place and and elevate you to a whole new place of anointing, of power, but also uh, even of wealth gathering and wealth creation. That's going to be an anointing, says the Lord, that I've put upon your life lives to be able to disperse and disseminate for out of this place, says the Lord, teams will go to the nations, uh, missionaries will go to the nations, apostles and prophets will go to the nations. You're going to plant many churches, but you're going to sow seeds into the nations of teams. And the Lord says, you're not going to have just one kind of team. You're going to have multiple, multiple teams, says the Lord. So the Lord says, son and daughter, as I bring you into an understanding of the fullness, you've understood it, but now I'm going to cause you to understand the fullness of it. The Lord says that supernatural favor is going to going to break things open for you like you've never seen before. Now, Father, I thank you for them, and I release that over their lives and over this house now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. Amen. Hallelujah.